And welcome in to the Fun Astrology Podcast. Thomas Miller on June 2nd, Tuesday, a day that may be super significant in the energetic annals of history that may, again, just kind of like January 12th, 2020, when Saturn and Pluto conjuncted, may not indicate much on the surface, but a lot underneath the surface. Glad you stopped in today. We have two very unusual configurations in the chart, one of which would be enough to... Okay, I had to Google this, guys. I had to Google what is the most rare animal on Earth to see. And there were 35 that came up on the top search. And the first of the 35 is the northern hairy-nosed wombat. (laughs) I'm not kidding it. This is on the Internet. You can go look it up yourself. The northern hairy-nosed wombat is one of the most rare animals to see on the Earth. And this configuration in today's chart is one of the most rare that we would see astrologically. How rare is it? Well, there's something in astrology called a yod. You ever heard of it? Some people call it a witch's hat because it is a triangle that's really thin. And some people call it the finger of God because it's supposed to do special work in the chart, especially with the three planets involved or more, but three at least. And the yod is called the finger of God because it is um, it basically focal points on that tip of the witch's hat, that planet. Really is the same concept that we have with any other triangle formation like a T-square where the, the top of the pyramid planet would be the focal point of the energy. Well, this isn't a yod. <laughs> like, what? Here's the deal. A yod is is you got to think about this now. Think of a witch's hat, all right? So a yod, uh, the definition of a yod is the base of that triangle, that base of that long, tall triangle are sextiles. So that's two planets 60 degrees apart from each other. And then the top one, the top planet up there at the top of the hat is 150 degrees to each of the two at the bottom. Well, this is the same thing except the two at the bottom are squares, and instead of 150 degrees to the third to the top of the hat, it's 135. So this is all squares. Instead of at least with a yod, you've got two that are in sextile relationship to each other. Here, everybody is in some type of a square, whether it's a what's called a sesquisquare, that's the 135, that's the two long sides going up to the top, or the square at the base. There's not a name for this one. Same energy, just spread out a little bit. So the other concept of this, I'll introduce a new word, midpoints. Now, back in March, I did a conference. Uh, Of course, it was not live. It was supposed to be in Gainesville, Florida, where these people are based. But it was a conference of midpoint astrology. And not to just get you completely lost on this concept, but let's just try to figure this out. So the moon right now, I'm looking at the Libran moon, which is at 26 degrees Libra, which is in an exact degree square to Jupiter in Capricorn at 26 degrees. So if you move over from the Libran moon, just think in your mind, Scorpio, Sagittarius, Capricorn, that's 90 degrees. There's a square, right? One fourth of a circle. All right. Now, what's in between that? Well, it would be the point at 13 degrees Sagittarius. That's the midpoint in between those two. Now, there's no planet there, but if there was, it would be considered to be the midpoint between the moon and Jupiter. Does that make sense? Just sits halfway in between two other planets. The concept of midpoint astrology is there's a ton of energy there. And then what David Cochran who is the brilliant astrologer and software designer, he did the Sirius and Kepler software programs, if you're familiar with those. And David is just a brilliant individual. What he's done is taken those midpoints and sliced them even further into what's called harmonics. So it's basically tenths of degrees or degrees of degrees around the circle. It gets into some really heavy stuff that I'm not even going to try. <laughs> There's no audio book on that one, folks. <laughs> I promise you that. You'd be going, huh? But David has done this just um, incredible body of work around midpoints. 
this really amplified energy that they create. Well, what this is, because it looks like a triangle hat, you know, a witch's hat or uh, a Merlin's hat. Let's call it a Merlin's hat. Maybe that sounds a little better, right? So this, the, the yacht is the witch's hat. This is the Merlin's hat. <laughs> we'll just call it that. We just named a, an aspect uh, thing here. All right. So what you have is instead of it being in Sagittarius, this other midpoint is opposite exactly in Gemini. So there's how you get the triangle. And what's down there is nothing but the sun and Venus. So there's your triangle. There's your midpoint triangle, the moon and Jupiter. But with Jupiter, I'm going back in history here to date myself, Steely Dan. You've got clowns on the left of me, jokers on the right. Well, you've got Saturn on the left of me, Pluto on the right. So that's what makes this so ominously just wow. And there's a whole nother one we're going to talk about. So there's the moon, Pluto, Jupiter, Saturn, and the midpoint, the sun and Venus. And oh, by the way, and I forget who I saw this from. Oh, it was Chris Brennan had a link to this in Twitter. Chris is just doing some amazing work. So that's the Astrology Podcast, the guy behind the Astrology Podcast, Denver-based astrologer, uh, just really doing some amazing contributions to astrology. But he posted this article. It was written back like in 2007 or something, quite a while ago, where somebody was talking about Venus retrogrades, which it is right now, bringing to light historically, historically in modern history, bringing to light uh, issues of racial inequality. So, for example, the Civil Rights Act in the 1960s was signed under this, that kind of thing. So Venus being in retrograde and riots on the street and the Sun and Venus two degrees apart from each other, almost conjunct. That will be two days from now on Thursday. Then this Merlin's hat finger of God, <laughs> this Merlin's hat of God, God's hat. I don't know. I don't know what we call it. Maybe we call it God's hat. But, well, he's got two of them. But anyway, this is some amazing energy. So number one has the moon and Saturn, Pluto, Jupiter at the base. And then it has the sun and Venus at the top. Wow. It's like everything that's been going on just gets this, I don't know. And the fact that it's squares, there's a tension around this. So there's that. I mean, that just brings everything together. And then the other one is over on the other side of the chart. And now the moon becomes the top of the hat with Mars and the Sun Venus at the base. So now, in essence, what we've done is we've just brought Mars into this whole thing with the moon, which is a trigger as it's transiting, connected to Mars and the Sun and Venus. So as you can tell, I think there are just all kinds of ways and things that could be pulled or extracted from this. Could these two configurations in the chart on the same day be a big, massive trigger for something? Could be. Could it be like an energetic infrastructure that is like this pop, but you, you kind of hear or feel the pop, but it unfolds over a long time? That could be, too. That was Saturn-Pluto back on January 12th. However it works out, I'm thinking of the definition of aspects that Stephen Forrest says, that these planets are trying to work together. Now, is there tension at their table or is there ease at their table? And with this one, there's tension. And we have this square. Let's not forget that we are full on now in the square between Mars and the Sun and Venus. So you know what I would do with all of this? I would get on Google and I would search up the northern hairy-nosed wombat. And I would take a good look at that thing because that's exactly what you're seeing up in the sky. And then I would do some meditating. <laughs> I'll tell you, boy, this one is something else. I'll tell you, this is some ominous energy. It will be really interesting to see how this ultimately unfolds. Will we even know? Or is this just a subtle current in the energy field that will work itself out? But we'll, we could go back to a marker and say, you remember that double midpoint thing back on June 2nd? Wow. We'll see. We will see. All right, I am going to be working later today on this 
big outlook piece, and I don't know how long this thing is going to take me. So as soon as it's done, I will let you know. If you want to be checking in as an early anticipator, check in the soulfoodtalks.com freebies box section, and whenever it's done, I will have it in there. Hope to work on it this morning, but it keeps growing. So we'll see. All right, take care. Have a good one. Back tomorrow. Back tomorrow.